G4 KLX. If any of you have been in Packet for a while, like a long time ago, you've run into some of his code probably. This is Jonathan Naylor out of the UK. Um, he said, okay, well, you can do GMSK on a sound card with normal DSP technology, so he wrote a GMSK um, modem uh, that runs on a sound card, and uh, he's applied it to a couple applications. Uh, he's also um, uh, done a node adapter um, uh, interface, so you can go out the USB and talk to one of these hardware modems instead of uh, uh, using the sound card. The sound card works fine. There's probably 30 or 40 repeaters in Europe that run it just using a sound card, uh, as well as individual stations, as you'll see here in a minute. Um, the node adapter runs with the Satoshi firmware uh, just fine. Uh, I have to update this slide. I got an email as I was sitting there. It now works with the Dutch Star firmware, uh, so either card is fine. Uh, uh, it's easier to set up with a GUI, but there's also configuration files, and you can do it from the command line. Um, it also includes full analog uh, repeater controller and can do dual mode. Um, you can get the sources for this uh, off of this uh, Yahoo group, PC repeater controller. Um, so uh, this, this is just really uh, uh, a, a, an interesting piece of software. I'd run it. It runs on uh, Linux and Windows. You get the sources. You can. Um, this was written by Scott Lawson, KI4LKF, uh, with the assistance of some other people. It's not currently being developed or maintained, but there's a fair number of uh, uh, cases out there where it's being used. It uses a node adapter for the radio interface. It works uh, okay with the Satoshi firmware. Uh, it works with the Dutch Star software if you get the super secret newer build that isn't released yet. Uh, but there is a minor issue there in that it loses packet sync. It's written in C++, uh, compiles on both Linux and Windows. Done it. Uh, looks uh, like an ICOM controller to a gateway almost. Um, there's some timing issues. And so we wrote this MUX program, which handles that. And it also allows you to run multiple instances of the repeater software, both locally and remotely. So you can have just a, um, um, a computer running the repeater software on some remote location and send UDP packets back to the MUX controller, which will in turn talk to um, the gateway and it more or less all plays together happily. NI Star, this is G G4 ULF's project. Uh, it is closed source. <coughs> he originally was going to do open source, then he went closed source. We'll see where it goes from there. Um, but the repeater in it works with both sets of for firmware. It works great. Um, and uh, uh, this is one of the most exciting things that have happened. Uh, uh, recently, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the adoption uptake on it's been a little slow because people are, what is it, why do I need it? Um, basically, because of this, this uh, uh, U.S. root, uh, X-trust, multi-trust separation, y you couldn't be on one trust and talk to stations that were on the other trust, okay? So, what happened is there were large blocks in Europe that had been kind of going with the X-Trust, Multi-Trust because they wanted to experiment things. And then all of a sudden they decided, discovered they couldn't talk to anybody on, <laughs> on the rest of the network. I mean, the size of the US route is, is at least five times as big uh, from a user base and repeater point of view. Um, so there's a couple, of white, uh, a couple of bright guys, I assume they're white too, but they're bright guys uh, in Germany that uh, decided to look at this problem and come up with a solution. Well, one of the great promises of DSTAR is you could use this thing called call sign routing. So, but someone could address a transmission to me, K7VE, and let the network figure out where I am and send the transmission to me. Pretty simple stuff. The problem was that in the iterations of the software that came from ICOM, those updates sometimes took two hours. So if I'm driving from 
out of the pattern of one repeater to the next, it may not get the update of where I am for two hours to route the traffic to me. Uh, they got that down to about 15 minutes, but what IRCDDB does, so they set up an internet relay chat server, and they wrote a little piece of software you put on your gateway, and as your gateway notices new stations coming on, or anytime someone transmits, it sends a broadcast out to this uh, uh, IRC server, which relays it to anyone else that's listening, just like in relay chat, right? And so all of those transmissions get updated instantly. You can talk in between the two networks all you want now, because it keeps track of where the repeaters are and where the users are. And so that's that. Visit the site. They've got in-depth technical documentation, all of the sources available. Um, it's, it's really pretty cool stuff. OK, so in DSTAR, we have these things called gateways, which are basically the jumping point from RF to the internet and back. There are three, well, two existing frameworks and more coming. Um, uh, NI star uh, and of course ICOMS gateway, which um, is is the baseline. Um, again, developed G4 ULF. It is authorized to be on the U.S. Root Trust. Full functionality. I have everything. D plus. I have call sign routing. I have uh, GPS reporting. It it's a complete package. So it talks to the node adapters. It works on both major f uh, versions of uh, firmware. It was on probably OpenG2. This is another Scott Lawson project. Um, Scott's quit developing. He's dropped out. Oh, thank you. Uh, of, of the DSTAR community. Uh, all the sources for this are available on the PC repeater controller section. It is in heavy use, particularly uh, on the uh, uh, X-Trust, uh, multi-trust network. Um, you're not supposed to run it on the US route. Uh, partially from a testing point of view. I mean, it just wasn't tested uh, with the US route. There is no current owner, uh, though builds and deployments continue. Uh, it emulates the ICOM G2 software. It's just a reverse engineering project. I mean, I, I, it tries to be bug for bug compatible, but uh, there's a few places where the bugs are different. Um, it, and so on. Uh, and you can also hook your ICOM controller in through the MUX or directly to it uh, if you want to use it in place of the ICOM software, which works great. I'm not bad mouthing it at all. Um, there's a new project, don't have a lot of details on it, uh, but a gateway that's purely based on the IRCDDB. The nice thing about it is you'll no longer need to register radios. When you push the mic and your D-Star radio sends your call sign, that's your registration. Okay? Um, be out a few months. Uh, acceptance will still be in question whether people want to go that route, but at least the infrastructure is getting there to do it. That could do it now. In fact, um, the IRC DDB, you don't have to be on any trust at all to participate in. So the users have to be registered on a trust to get relayed. To get relayed. Uh, by the respective networks, but uh, actually uh, uh, having your information reported and so on, uh, the repeater doesn't need to be. Okay, the next major cam category is gateway and reflector linking. DSTAR natively has no linking technology. It's a stateless transmission. So each time you key the mic, it gets treated independently. There's no session, no but on the radio interface level at least. Um, all the gateway implementations use UDP to send that stream to any remote gateway. Um, so it, it, it didn't have that. But there were some people that wanted linking, so uh, Robin wrote it uh, using D+. Um, it actually uses a separate infrastructure. Um, and it is the most used application of DSTAR. 
there are three major implementations, D plus, D extra, and kind of a sort of implementation, D rats. That's not a negative comment, it's just, it, it, it's a different space. Um, so D plus was developed by AAR4RC. What it does is it sits and it packet sniffs the UDP ports that the controller uses to talk to the gateway. And that's how it gets the traffic, that's how it gets the commands that are being sent uh, to, to do the linking and unlinking. Um, and then it creates its own UDP TCP network to transfer the traffic to another repeater or to a reflector uh, where the process is reversed and it just inserts packets on the, um, to the controller by pretending it's the gateway. Okay, so uh, basically all of that communication between the controller and the gateway takes place on UDP port 40,000. So it's doing that. Um, its own traffic travels on ports 2001 through 2000, or 20,001 through 2004. Um, anyway, that's how it works. Um, it ena enables the DV dongle, it enables the DVAP, it enables reflectors, um, it enables repeater to repeater linking. Uh, it's used by an application called the DVAR hotspot. Um, it is closed source, and Robin's done quite a few security enhancements on it. Uh, there are some historical and political reasons for that, uh, but they, uh, they allow it to be a pretty uh, secure net. The extra was supported by uh, Scott KI4LKF. Uh, again, he's kind of dropped out. Uh, Jonathan Naylor is doing some enhancements on it right now. The source is available. Um, Again, it was mostly a function-for-function -function copy of D+. Um, in fact, his project initially was to talk on the D+, network, but using his own source. And that's part of the reason the security enhancements came. It has clients for the dongle. Uh, same type of functionality as Hotspot is available. There are reflectors. Everything runs on Linux and Windows. Uh, it's not common, there are some out there, it's not coming on the US root trust and it is the preferred uh, version on multi-trust. Uh, DVAR hotspot, uh, this is a Windows application. Uh, basically, it takes a node adapter, hooks it into a window box, uses the D plus infrastructure to tie people back into the linked uh, reflectors and gateways. And um, works great. There are simplex nodes, there are repeaters out there, but you don't get all the uh, features of DSTAR with it. Uh, digital voice. There are three open source applications, the extra client, DSTAR client, DV tool reader, uh, all by uh, G4KLX. That's the group for it. Again, you can get all the source and see how it works. Um, this basically does the same thing as, uh, uh, as the DV tool. You plug your dongle into your uh, Windows box and you can talk on the D-Extra network. DSTAR client, this is kind of interesting. Um, and in, in fact, if, if someone was uh, working on an SDR and wanted a, a way to, uh, to do DSTAR on it, you still have to get the Ambi chip somehow. Either the dongle or Fred's board or design your own daughter card. Um, anyway, using two sound cards, uh, and now the, node the plan can go away, it works on the node adapter now, <laughs> email this morning. Um, basically you do the GMSK out of sound card or a node adapter, you have another sound card for the uh, speaker and, and microphone. Uh, you got to use a radio that's fit for 9600 baud packet, uh, is the easy way to think of it. Basically, you got to get it the discriminator and modulator. Uh, there's probably 50 or 60 radios that people have done this with. Um, and then you need to have a control for COR, PTT, Acumen, PTT. Um, his first implementation used the, VL, the Veleman K8055 board. He's enhanced that. You can now use a serial port or URI to mark it. You put all that together, you can build a DV-compatible radio. Um, 